Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the model minority stereotype and how that um, negatively impacts um, South Asians, especially in um, a setting of school. So what the model minority is, is a stereotype that suggests that Asian Americans are more academically, economically, and socially successful than any other racial minority groups. And this also um, signifies that the model minority assimilates into dominant culture, does not impose upon white culture, and is often seen as non-threatening. Um, so now we're gonna go into kind of the history of this term. Um, during the 1960s, civil rights movement, when Martin Luther King was advocating for uh, African Americans' rights, trying to tell people that racism had a tangible effect on African Americans in the US. Um, the kind of opposition to that was saying, well, hey, look at this other minority, Asian Americans, they're doing so well. Why, why aren't you doing well? Um, why are you, um, you know, not doing as well in school? Why are you not as financially successful. Um, and so that's kind of where the model minority term came about. Um, so what's the harm, I guess? Uh, the harm in this is that Asian American students will actually make less money upon entering the workforce compared to their white classmates. So even though we're seen as academically more successful, more financially successful, um, that doesn't necessarily translate. Uh, we are still, um, you know, underprivileged. Um, model minority pressure um, on students who don't feel like they uh, live up to this um, stereotype can have really harmful psychological effects. Um, Genevieve's going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so going along that uh, part, uh, a study that was uh, published by the Asian Pacific Islander American Health Forum revealed that. Um, oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, revealed that young South Asian American women actually have higher rates of suicide um, than the average American population, and not only that, but South Asians in general are among the lowest users of mental health care in the United States, and this is partially due to the stigma associated with mental health issues in the South Asian community and in the South Asian American community. Um, so this is still a large and relevant issue, and it's not always addressed because um, there is the model minority in addition to um, the culture as a whole, there's like there's a lot of pressure to achieve and to be the highest achievers um, in any community. Um, so there is, though it may seem that we don't have the same kinds of problems, we often do, but they're just not as visible. And that doesn't, obviously it doesn't make it less real, it's just less difficult to address, or it's more difficult to address. Um, so, in addition to that, the model minority myth also dismisses the actual experiences of racism that is faced by many Asian American students, ranging from personal to institutional practices. So students may, may face racism in subtle forms or less subtle forms in school, and they're less likely to come out and say something about it or speak up, um, and this might in part be of the model minority myth, um, and it kind of undermines their experiences in that sense. Um, and also, obviously, there are institutional ways in which Asian Americans are not considered equal. And Megan gave an example um, by saying that Asian American students make less money after they enter the workforce, after they graduate. Um, so that's also difficult to address because it's less uh, visible, but it's still um, can I just say one yeah, thing about that? Um, so I think that really speaks to um, the idea that comparing minorities and using the same measures to compare how minorities are doing in, in school, in communities, is not effective and is not productive because 
you know, as Jenny said, there is a discrepancy between, um, well, there is a, you know, among South Asian students, they, you know, they don't use mental health services. They have psychological issues um, that um, are not going, are not being addressed. So that um, is actually very harmful. And even though, um, you know, academically, um, they may be doing well, uh, socially they may be doing well, there are other things that need to be uh, addressed as well. So I just wanted to make that point. Um, so I'm going to quickly, um, quickly go over uh, what happened recently with the Miss America pageant. Um, a, an Indian, an Indian American woman won the pageant, um, and was that was not received well by some of the general population. And though um, Obama, I'm going to read a quick quote from him. He said, "What makes someone American isn't just blood or birth, but allegiance to our founding principles and faith in the idea that anyone from anywhere can write the next chapter of our story." Um, yeah, there was a large amount of backlash for her winning the pageant, and there were numerous quotes from people um, saying that she was a terrorist, that she is not American, that she's not American enough, and then citing various stereotypes, um, like Miss America, you mean Miss 7-Eleven, was one of these comments that were, became popular in media. Um, and the era Miss wins Miss America classic. So things of that nature. So obviously we are the model minority, but are we actually accepted as being as American as other white looking Americans? Um, do we still receive the same privileges? Those kinds of things are still important to consider and consider how this affects Asian Americans and South Asian Americans in our community today. Um. I guess just to um, discuss some of our own personal experiences. Um, growing up, um, I, I guess I, I did look like some of my, my white friends, um, but when you know, I had, um, we had celebrations of Diwali, uh, a holiday that was recently celebrated in uh, the Hindu community, um, my friends would kind of give me weird looks and say, oh, why are you, what is this? Uh, why do you, why does your dad look different from my parents? Why do your grandparents cook this weird smelly food? Like what? Why are you different? Um, and that was, um, you know, this lack of acceptance of diversity is something that you don't think that you know America would uh, have, but um, it was very real to me growing up. Um, and another thing um, that. Um, I get uh, I get a lot I get a lot of questions about where I'm from, um, and it's funny because I was, you know, I grew up in Michigan for almost my entire life, and people will ask me, you know, I look a little bit, you know, ethnic or whatever, so people will be like, okay, so where um, where are you from? And I'll say, well, you know, I'm I'm from Michigan. I I've been here for over 10 years, um, but then they'll be like, no, where, where are you actually from? And by that they mean, what is your, what is your race? Um, and, you know, being seen as a foreigner in a country you have been living in for almost your entire life is, is very, very disheartening. And you don't feel accepted, you don't feel like people, um, take you seriously, you don't feel like people view you as one of your, as, as someone that um, deserves to be there. 